Albert Einstein's theory of gravity was an astonishing discovery that reflected Einstein's extraordinary intelligence and genius in physics. It advanced Newton's law of gravitation by addressing the elusive question that no one, including Newton, could answer. Why does gravity exist in the universe? Einstein's theory promised to provide scientists and physicists with a straightforward understanding of the structure and operation of the universe, revealing secrets and shattering many myths. Instead, the theory yielded few positive results while inspiring absurd speculation. The reason? Einstein's theory lacks definition, is often illogical, and is misleading. Before Einstein, scientists believed gravity to be a mysterious force that pulled everything towards the center of the Earth and celestial bodies. Einstein postulated that masses, while prodding, pushing, pulling, or warping space, created gravity as if the interaction of masses in space producing gravity was insufficiently confusing, Einstein surmised that gravity is due to the curvature of space and time by masses. In pursuing the meaning of the curvature of space and time, we face a much greater mystery than gravity itself. Even if Einstein's supposition is correct, the curvature of space and time only constitutes one part of a chain of activities and events. It is the last phase resulting from several preceding actions and reactions. Such a statement alone cannot serve as a complete definition. It is vague, lacks details, and is logically deficient. Such a proposition is merely a snapshot at the end of a long day. Like a photo taken at the scene of an accident in a police report, the statement plays only a supporting role and does not hold all the clues to the entire investigation. A police officer must provide as much detail of the event that led to the accident as possible. As the proponent of his theory, Einstein bears responsibility for providing a definition that encompassed every contribution, activity, and element that defined gravity. We want to know the making, not only the picture showing how it finally looks. The encounter of mass with an absolute no-substance entity, a nothing such as time, would produce no physical effects, let alone gravity. The vagueness of the words, the curvature of space, is no less absurd than the curvature of time. Space is where everything, including the entire universe, resides. However, by definition, space is a vacuum, an absolute emptiness. Masses moving around in a vacuum do not press or curve anything and generate no gravity because the masses are not encountering any resistance or opposing force, which is the most important element of gravitation. Fortunately, Einstein did not stop at mysterious curvature. He helped us understand the core logic of his theory by using an illustrative example found in the behavior and reaction of a trampoline. You can visualize Einstein's gravity warp by stepping on a trampoline. Your mass causes a depression in the stretchy fabric of space. Roll a ball past the warp at your feet and it'll curve toward your mass. The heavier you are, the more you bend space. American Museum of Natural History. Replacing space-time with the fabric of a trampoline immediately makes physical sense. When stepping on a trampoline, pressing and stretching its fabric, one immediately meets a resistant opposite force that pushes an individual upward. Gravity occurs in the area sandwiched between the trampoline surface and the soles of one's feet. Whatever exists under your feet at that moment will be stuck to your soles. Without the trampoline, one's foot presses on nothing except air, encountering no resistant force and generating no gravity. Unlike space-time, a trampoline is an object with physical existence. Are we there yet? Not really. The trampoline example is only partially correct in illustrating the process. It is also unfortunately misleading. The first part, stepping on the trampoline creating gravity, is correct. However, the following interpretation Look at the edges of the trampoline. The warp lessens farther away from your mass. Roll a ball past the warp at your feet and it'll curve toward your mass is undeniably incorrect. The ball rolls toward the warp surrounding your feet because the gravity of Earth pulls it. This action has nothing to do with gravity an individual created by stepping onto the trampoline. If one places the trampoline in a wall-like vertical position, one can easily observe the reasons for such erroneous observations and conclusion. If an individual presses one feet as forcibly as possible on a vertical standing trampoline to create a deep curved or warped area, 
one will find that any attempt to roll a ball past the warp will result in the ball falling immediately to the ground. Furthermore, only the fabric of the trampoline is curved. Water, air, and space are not curved and immediately wrap around your feet if one steps on or penetrates any of them. Indeed, only objects stuck between two opposite forces, your feet and the surface of the trampoline, experience the newborn effects of gravity to the fullest. The ball, in the same sandwich position, will not fall. We have been living with the curvature of space-time and an erroneous physical interpretation of the trampoline's experiment for over 100 years. It's time to correct the record about our knowledge of gravity. Stars, planets, and masses in general constantly move and press, collapsing may be the correct word, on space, a vacuum which cannot produce gravity. Nevertheless, gravity exists. Each should have pressed on something residing in the space that generates resonant opposite force exactly as the trampoline fabric. One scientist of Einstein's generation, Fritz Zwicky, 1898-1974, quickly recognized the trampoline of the universe. Upon hearing about Einstein's new theory, he observed that this theory of gravity proves the existence of dark matter. Although having no genius to detect the source of gravity himself, he understood the necessary process, vital elements and contributors for gravity to appear. He provided a clearer view of the mechanical details inside gravity than Einstein. Dark matter, DM, fills up space, just as in the trampoline metaphor, and constantly generates the resistant opposite force against stars, planets, masses, etc., creating gravity. This constitutes gravity type 1. Does that mean there is no gravity in a vacuum, an absolutely empty area? Apparently, another kind of gravity exists, also thanks to dark matter. This may be termed gravity type 2, created by a different process. When a star explodes, the event creates a void where it was before. Dark matter immediately moves in to fill the vacuum. The sucking-like power of this type of gravity is generally located at the center of the exploded star. If the mass is huge and the explosion extremely forceful, this event will create a giant empty space. Like the water of numerous falls, dark matter pours in, rushing toward the same spot with full force. This phenomenon may result in a small black hole. Therefore, we have a new proposition. In space, the interaction between dark matter and masses creates gravity. In general, gravity always occurs in the area sandwiched between masses pressing on each other. To find evidence of gravity, one no longer must look to the sky, searching for the curvature of space-time. Whether it be stars, planets and dark matter, or human bodies and trampoline fabric, masses large and small create gravity every time, everywhere. Observe your fingers, two tiny masses, when picking up something. They create gravity by forcefully moving fingers toward each other to keep an object from escaping. To complete the discussion of Einstein's theory, one must address the following question. Are masses moving toward dark matter creating pressure or vice versa? The Earth and all celestial bodies have no natural self-powering systems to generate any motion by themselves. Only dark matter moves and is responsible for the movement of most things in the universe. Stars and planets, Earth included, are moving along the streams of DM that carry them. Being pushed and surrounded by DM, they move forward, spinning in space. Thus, the total force that constitutes a planet's gravity should be the combination of that pressure of the part of the DM surrounding it and the part that pushes it. Having improved and completed Einstein's theory of gravity, Another question immediately arises. What makes dark matter move in the universe? The answer requires a big picture. The universe is growing. It takes an enormous volume of dark matter every nanosecond to maintain the universe's expansion. The expanding speed never ceases. It gets faster and faster. Dark matter's extremely high velocity generates the most potent pushing force in the universe. When hitting any mass's inertia, or its resistant power, that force creates gravity. Grasping the big picture. While performing its universe-expanding duty, 
Dark matter carries and constantly pushes every mass in space toward all corners of the universe, applying a great deal of pressure on anything it encounters. Unlike the water current that mostly pushes on an object's surface, dark matter pushes and spins an object and every single atom in it, distributing its pressure to create gravity for everything large and small, from outside to the very core inside, everywhere. The last question, from where does dark matter come? We will find the answer when searching the formation of the universe.